welcome guys. We're so excited that you are here um, to learn a little bit about CentOS in our management trainee program. Probably some helpful tips and tricks along the way as we all uh, here love to give those out. Uh, really quickly, I'm going to do an introduction of myself. I'm going to pass it over to my team to also introduce themselves so you know who is here talking to you um, and also who to connect with if you are interested in moving forward with CentOS. So my name is Danielle Fry. Uh, you may see it as Holmes as well, recently married. So we're in between two names at this point. I am the Campus Talent Acquisition Manager covering Western United States and Western Canada, minus Southern California. Um, my wonderful counterpart, Nancy, will cover that area. And I started in CentOS a little over four and a half years ago as a management trainee. So this exact program that I now recruit for. Um, and I was part of our old program, which was 24 months. You'll learn today that it's about 15 months now. And I started in our Northern California location in Stockton, California. Worked my way through that program. Um, and from there, I went into sales. I spent a year and a half in sales as a number one sales rep doing facility services and then uniforms. I was a president's club rep, a mentor, a captain. Um, and from there, this wonderful opportunity was actually brought to me. And I stepped into this role about a year and a half ago. Um, now I have the opportunity to work with our current management trainees and help with their development, as well as bring on our new management trainees and interns. So you'll learn a little bit more about that program as we go through our slideshow today. Um, but that's a little bit about me. I'm going to throw it over to my awesome Southern California counterpart, Nancy. Hi, everyone. My name is Nancy Solis. And as Danielle mentioned, I cover Southern California. So that's uh, everything Bakersfield all the way down to San Diego. If you're interested, connect with me. I put my LinkedIn information in the chat box. I've been with Centos for six years already. I spent the first five years in a human, man a human resource manager position. Um, we're excited to share so much about uh, what we have to offer today. So you'll hear more about me later when I share about our MT and intern program. Awesome. Thank you. All right. I'm throwing it right over to Olivia. Thanks, Danielle. My name is Olivia Timmerman. I cover the Southeast for CentOS. So that's anywhere from the Carolinas, Georgia, Alabama, and the entire state of Florida. Um, I did start my career with CentOS about three years ago at our Louisville, Kentucky location. And I've had the, you know, blessed opportunity to be able to work at multiple different locations that we have. And I even moved a thousand miles away and was able to continue my career with CentOS. So Really excited to talk to you all about our culture a little bit more this evening and uh, really just show you what we are all about here at CentOS. So thank you for having us. Thank you, Olivia. All right, Julie, you are up. Hi guys, so my name is Julie Quick and I am the Campus Talent Acquisition Manager for the Northern Territory, which would be the Northeast side of the country. Um, all the way from Michigan, Indiana, Ohio, Pennsylvania, Massachusetts, all the way up the east coast into canada so if you're in my area i also dropped my linkedin in there thanks nancy for that that tip uh if you'd like to connect i would love to speak with you i have been with cintas just over a year actually and i started my career out with nancy in california um just recently as of monday returned back to the east coast so very excited to be back over here i uh, love being a campus recruiter for CentOS. And I am looking forward to sharing with you a little bit about the different divisions that CentOS has and the opportunities that we can offer you. Awesome, thank you so much. All right, let's dive right into the good stuff. Um, I'm just making sure I'm gonna check the chat one more time before I can no longer see it. And my wonderful team will continue uh to check that for me feel free to interrupt but we are going to dive right into all things CentOS and management trainee so I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and a little bit about CentOS's background so we were founded in 1929 our founders were actually circus performers and if you think back to your elementary and junior high and all the other history classes we took uh, that was the Great Depression. So imagine Cinto, uh, excuse me, circus performers were probably not doing so hot during that time. Um, so our founders actually started to pick up rags out of the trash in Cincinnati, Mason, Ohio area and started washing them at home and then selling them right back 
to the businesses that threw them in the trash to begin with. So we're kind of uh, cool when it comes to recycling because we were doing it before that was even a term. And we are still headquartered in that same area. So we are still based in Cincinnati, Ohio, technically Mason, so very small town outside of that. We're a professional service industry. Um, just a fancy way to say that we're taking care of other businesses on a day-to-day -day basis. We are a publicly traded uh, company. If you check out our stock prices, you will be very impressed. Uh, we have grown a lot over the last couple of years, um, especially through COVID and some other challenges. We are an essential business, so we did not go anywhere. But we get people ready for the workday. We have three large divisions and Julie will actually touch these a little bit later on, um, but we have a uniform and facility service division we call our rental division. Then we have a first aid and safety division and a fire division. Those are our three main divisions, but we do have some smaller offshoots throughout those as well. We have 460 locations across the United States and Canada more than 40,000 employee partners. We, through this presentation, will refer to them only as partners. We don't call them employees, but we like to up front at least let you guys know what that means for us. Uh, in 2020, excuse me, FY21, we did $7.11 billion in sales. So uh, that's billion with a B. That is very large number. We have more than 11,000 trucks on the road every single day, more than a million customers every single day. And of those million customers, more than 5 million people wake up and put on a CentOS uniform every single day. Um, we'll give you some other facts and figures throughout this presentation, but those are just some of those big numbers that we like to throw at you right off the bat. Very high level overview. We are missing some dots, but we were founded in Ohio, so we're very heavy in the East Coast still. I am based in the West Coast, um, and out here we are growing extremely rapidly. We do have one of the newest facilities out here in our Southern California location. I know uh, our Oregon location is getting built currently. We just opened up a new distribution center in Phoenix. So the West is growing. So do not be scared by the dots that are not out here. That's just the amount of growth and opportunity there is for you. Um, and if you want to be on the East Coast, there's obviously a bazillion opportunities for you out there as well. So a little bit about CentOS's vision uh, and where we want this company to, to go and expand is that we want to be recognized as a company that assists upon absolute honesty and integrity with everything you do. You will see that we don't shortcut anything when it comes to sales, when it comes to delivering customers, products and services, uh, hiring. We follow a very strict moral and ethical code policies, procedures. We don't backdoor. We don't shut, don't uh, take shortcuts. Uh, we're going to do it right the first time and every time. We uh, want to have the highly talented, diverse, and engaged team of partners who work safely and compatible with our core culture and enjoy what they do. You will see this today, but also if you continue with us in a hiring process, you'll see exactly that. We hire based on our corporate culture. Are you going to follow those moral and ethical codes? Are you going to work hard? Are you competitive? All of those different things, because that's what makes our business successful. I can teach you skills. I can't teach you to be morally and ethically correct. So that is why that's such a big principle for us. We want to consistently increase our market shares of each of our businesses. So of those three divisions, um, just another fun fact for you guys. Only 1% of our customers have all three divisions. That is just the amount of opportunity that CentOS has to grow to our current customers, much less customers we don't service. So pretty insane to think about. Um, we want to penetrate, penetrate our customer base with all products and services. So going back to making sure they have all three divisions within. We want to take advantage of international expansion opportunities where the market provides long-term growth. Um, this is, it's ongoing. So we did have a location or a couple locations out in China for a couple of years and realized after, I believe we we're out there five, six years, um, that it was not following our corporate culture, that the labor market out there was not, um, excuse me, labor rights out there were not necessarily what we wanted to be. And we could be profitable 
but it wasn't the type of profitable that we wanted to be. So we left that market in late 2019, early 2020. But we have a team that that's their whole focus is where are we going to go next? Is it Europe? Is it, uh, you know, South Africa? Who knows where is next? But we're always looking to continue to grow that. To identify additional products and services so that we can ultimately provide a product and service to every business in North America. Uh, so within the last couple of years, we've, we've had some big ones come out. One of the biggest ones was different skin colored bandages. So we could be not only more diverse, but we had more options for our customers. Instead of it being a Band-Aid for my skin tone, now I have a Band-Aid for all, sor all sorts of skin tones. Um, and we brought in new products for COVID, so new cleaning services and stuff like that as well. We are always going to continue to grow with that. I know we have a couple new ones on the horizon very soon, um, so stay tuned for those. And then our corporate culture. So as you get to hang out with CentOS, you will realize just how important this is to us. You've heard me in the first three minutes talk about this or 10 minutes, wherever we are. Uh, and you'll hear Olivia talk about it next and some other partners talk about it through their presentations. But it is really important to us. And so I'm going to throw it right over to Olivia now to dive a little bit more into this. Awesome. Thanks, Danielle. I'm so happy to get to talk to you guys about our CentOS culture because it's one of the main reasons why I chose to pursue a career with CentOS. Um, it's one of my favorite questions I get when I'm out and about on campus and I get to really speak behind the passion as to the why I chose the company and why I continue to stay with the company. So first and foremost, I'm going to go through these three tenants that you see listed here. The first one being our principal objective. You can think of our principal objective kind of as our mission statement. Every business decision that we make, we look at the statement to ensure that we're making the right decision. So to reiterate, we will exceed our customers' expectations to maximize the long-term value of CentOS for its shareholders and working partners. We want to make sure that our decisions will positively impact each one of these constituents, our customers, our stakeholders, because we are publicly traded like Danielle mentioned, and most importantly, our working partners. And aside from that, we have our corporate character. So that's basically who we are and how we do business and our overall way of working. This truly makes CentOS a world-class environment. We strive to bring in the right people into our organization who are compatible with these traits, and we will dive into each character trait here in the next slide. But our corporate character, like I said, it's who we are, and it's the reason why I've been able to walk into so many different locations that we have at CentOS. And personally, I've never met a stranger because we're all hired with the same characteristics, and we want to make sure that anytime we're having someone join our CentOS family, they reflect our values. Last but not least, our management system. So we have a lot of policies and procedures in place, and with my HR background, I can uh, reiterate and rattle off a bunch of those. Um, but aside from that, it helps us do our business right and promote our ongoing reliability um, and operational consistency. You would hate to walk into a company where policies and procedures aren't set simply because, you know, maybe they won't always take the most ethical route, or maybe there won't be fairness and equality amongst every single person working there. So these are extremely important, especially because you can move to different locations and advance your career. You can even switch divisions, which we'll talk about more. Um, but personally, when I switched from our rental division to our fire division, I had a sense of peace knowing that our policies and procedures were going to be the same, regardless of where I was working in what division. So moving forward, like I mentioned, our corporate character, what you're going to see here on the slide is a bunch of different guiding principles. So I would like you all to, you know, just take a moment, go through this list and think to yourself, do these characteristics define you and what you're looking for in your company um, that you want to invest in for your career? If so, CentOS could be a great place for you to work with. Um, a few of them, I won't go through the entire list, but professional, not just the way we look, but the way we carry ourselves. We like to carry ourselves with confidence in the way we communicate with others. Ethical, doing what's right always, not cutting corners like Danielle said, making sure that even if anyone or even if nobody's around, you're always doing the right thing. Being thorough, being hardworking. We have some of the hardest working individuals that you will ever meet, and we always get the job done. We're held to extremely high standards here at CentOS. So we're always looking to be the best version of ourselves and our company. And I think a lot of that shines through with our professional development as well. And, you know, just making sure that we are consistently not only improving ourselves, but the company as a whole. Being courteous, being enthusiastic, humble, and doing what's right. 
our business standards are the minimum expectations of how we do our work. We have our positive discontent, meaning that we're never satisfied with the status quo. We have competitive urgency, so we attend to every single detail of our business with urgency. If a customer is calling us, I can't tell you how many times I've seen a handful of our partners drop exactly what they were doing to go take care of a bigger issue and prioritizing those. Growth, we're passionate about growth, growth of our working partners and growth of our company. And then just to wrap up our entire corporate character, it's who we are. So I hope these characteristics kind of shed some light on the partners that you may work with um, and why you should potentially choose Centos as your uh, career path. So let's dive into a few more pieces of our culture. And the next one's going to be our commitment to diversity and inclusion, as well as philanthropy and um, just overall environmental sustainability. So with that, our commitment to environmental and government, um, environmental, uh, sorry, <laughs> environmental, social, and government excellence, say that 10 times fast. Um, we are going to dive into this ESG journey, and this is actually something that we print on a regular basis. So on a yearly basis, we are given all of these fun facts updated to all of our Syntas partners. And it shows a lot of transparency with our company. I can't tell you how many companies you go to and they'll brush things under the rug. But here at Syntas, we wanna make sure that everyone is being as transparent and honest as possible. So you'll see a lot of the facts up top are going to relate to even current events like COVID-19 and things that are still impacting our environment today. Regardless, with ESG, we are trying to reduce our carbon footprint and really just leave a good mark on the uh, earth as we continue on to almost being here for the last 100 years. And moving forward into diversity and inclusion. So this is one of my favorite parts of CentOS. It's one of the main reasons why um, I chose to pursue my career here and mainly because it varies by person. So let me tell you what diversity means to CentOS, and then you can come up with your own interpretations of whether or not it fits what your diversity vision is. So the first one's going to be our partner engagement. We have what are called partner business resource groups, and it allows everyone to really find their home at CentOS. There is such a wide range of them from the African-American community, Hispanic community, LGBTQIA+, um, even just a women minority group. Um, that's just to name a few. There are still many other ones. But each one has a special place in my heart with the fact that I can be an ally to every single one. I may not fit the mold. I may not be the perfect candidate to be an active member, but I'm the type of person who can enter into any meeting and just better myself and help myself become more diverse and inclusive. We also have supplier diversity. So we source suppliers from around the globe that um, treat their people fairly and provide us with the best products possible. Our corporate citizenship, we want to make an impact. So with that, I'm going to show you more about our philanthropy on the next slide. But before we move forward to that, multicultural marketing. Our diverse customer base helps our stability. So the impact of this is helping us, um, the candidates, learn more about, you know, anyone who wants to potentially invest in their career with CentOS. They're going to see it from different perspectives. And we listen to our customers. And we want to deliver those innovative products and services that exceed their expectations. And then last but not least on this side, governance policies and procedures that help us do the business right. I know I mentioned that on the last slide, but I can't harp on it enough. The fact that we wanna create equal policy for everyone so that everyone has the same opportunity to advance in their career. Alrighty, so moving forward into CentOS Cares. This is definitely a really fun part of CentOS, especially from my HR perspective and background. I always love being able to take a deep dive into our philanthropic uh, side of CentOS. We wanna make an impact in every community. So it doesn't matter which CentOS location you're looking at, we have both local and we have national um, philanthropic opportunities for us to really help out the community and help out our fellow partners. One of which that really resonates well with me is disaster relief efforts and the fact that we have a partner assistance program. Not many companies are going to take care of you when the worst hits. So we wanna make sure that we are harping on the fact that CentOS really does care about its partners. Um, I live here in Fort Myers, Florida. I don't know if you guys watched the news, but a few months ago, we got hit by a really bad hurricane. And there were so many partners who lost their homes. Um, and it's not just hurricanes, it's any natural disaster. It could be a house fire, it could be a tornado, flooding, you name it. We wanna make sure that they are taken care of and Centos goes above and beyond to do so. I donate $5 out of every single paycheck that I make voluntarily to make sure that I am helping out those who may need it more than me in the future. And then aside from that, um, 
that's our culture in a nutshell. I mentioned that it was going to be tough for me to, you know, be able to explain all of this in such a short amount of time. And I'm sure if you take the time to go onto our website, you're going to see so many more elements of our culture that you can take a deeper dive into. Lots of videos, lots of great information there. So please take a look. But now we're going to talk products and services. So I will throw it over to Julie. Thank you, Olivia. So I'm going to touch on the different divisions that Sintas has to offer uh, when it comes to our company. Um, we're not just about uniforms or mats on the floor that most people think of when they think of Sintas. Uh, we actually have a wide variety of different divisions that will handle different things. So we have a rental division of facility services, direct sales, and strategic markets. First aid and safety, we have fire protection, we also do promotional products, and we also have a global supply chain. So I'm gonna talk a little bit about um, one of our main divisions, which is going to be our rental division. This makes up about 80% of the business of Cintas. Uh, like Daniel said in the very beginning, 5 million people wake up every morning and they put on a Cintas rental uniform. Uh, we do have over 250 rental locations across the United States and into Canada, and we have 450 uniform sales representatives that are nationwide as well. Um, we offer work shirts and work pants. We do a scrub uh, rental program for the hospitals or other companies that use scrubs in their everyday. We have women's garments. Um, who doesn't like to you know, get, you get your uniform for your company and it's a unisex uniform. We offer women's sizes to make it a little more comfortable for the female population. Uh, we have partnerships with Carhartt. We have a partnership with ChefWorks for all of your culinary needs. Um, we offer clean room uh, uniforms and which came into, um, came into play largely in 2020 with our um, COVID that happened. And then we also offer flame resistant clothing as well. Also within rental is going to be our facility services. Um, so this will be housed under the same location. We offer clean restroom solutions. Um, so we can save a company about 20% when it comes to um, employee hours and wages by us being able to come in and clean the restrooms for them. Um, so we'll bring in your mats, we'll go in and um, actually clean the restrooms. We supply you with paper towel and toilet paper and soaps and different things like that. We also have a clean kitchen solution. So um, we have a total gallons of hand lotion and sanitizer sold in one year. You could fill an Olympic sized swimming pool 2.5 times. So we offer many different um, options when it comes to keeping yourself clean and keeping your kitchens clean. And then we also have a safe floor solution as well. So um, of course we have our mats that we're really famous for, but then travel to the moon and back again, nearly 10 times would equal the total of miles of paper towel that is sold in one year. So we do have disinfectant and sanitizer spray services, uh, our mat services, our restroom supplies, hand sanitizers and stands. Uh, we have cleaning chemicals for your businesses, restroom cleaning, towel services, microfiber. The list goes on, guys. We have a ton when it comes to facility services, and this is how we get our customers ready for the workday with facility services. We also have our direct sales. Um, so we actually have a uh, location out of London that will deal with direct sales as well as locations here in the United States. Um, so this provides a complete portfolio of solutions in our healthcare, hospitality, food service, and our Fortune 1000 industries on a global scale. You probably recognize some of the companies that are down here. Um, these are companies that we work with and we have contracts with, and we help them get ready for their workday. Our next division is going to be our first aid and safety. We have the nation's largest van delivered first aid and safety, um, first aid and safety um, providing to all of our customers. So it was established in 1997 with over 35 
um, thousand first aid vehicle kits and wall mounted cabinets installed each year. Um, we offer first aid supplies. We offer safety supplies and PPE. We have AED heart defibrillators. Uh, we also offer training and compliance courses for the company so that they can remain compliant with the federal government. We also have eye washing stations. And then we also do a um, water filtration system uh, coolers that we can install into companies as well. Um, so our life-saving AED sales and services uh, was put together in 2003, and over 450 um, saves have been recorded from those Cintas AED programs. And Cintas is the largest provider of the American Heart Association first aid and CPR training, certifying over 200,000 individuals each year. And then next we get into our fire protection. Did you know that we offered fire protection? Uh, that was a part of CINTAS. Um, it's not always just about the fire extinguishers. We offer a wide variety of different things that have to do with keeping your company safe. We have fire sprinkler systems, fire extinguisher training. Um, we also have fire alarm monitoring as well as being able to install those panels. We also will put in the emergency um, emergency and exit lights that you'll see throughout a building. We can also help with the kitchen suppression systems as well as hazard suppression. So we are the second largest um, fire service provider in the United States with approximately 225,000 Cintas fire protection customers. And we have over 50 branches across the United States. Well, hello everyone again. This is Nancy and I'm excited to talk to you about now our MT and intern program. So to start off first, I know there will probably be questions about what's the MT, what's the intern program. They're very similar. So if you are a junior, um, sometimes we do do sophomores, but typically it's uh, juniors. If you're a senior who wants to get in an internship right now while you're in school, this is a program also for you, or you can do the internship during the summer and eight to 12 weeks. Um, for the MTs, if you are a senior who's going to be graduating this spring or maybe in the fall, you can start applying uh, for this program. So you can only start once you've graduated. Uh, but we start the, the interview process early. So now let me tell you what you can expect from the MT and intern program. So this is a program that's going to give you um, access to really learn the business and see four very important sides of the business. So let's let's go, for example, with if you're an MT, you're coming in and this is a 15 month rotational program. You're going to spend 12 months on the operations side. And when we say operations, that's production and warehouse. That is our service department. That is HR and office. And then the last three months, you'll spend it in sales. The neat thing is through all these rotations, you're really going to get to learn the business from the bottom up. And when we say from the bottom up, we say that really means you're going to get in there and you're going to work with our frontline partners. You're going to work with the managers and supervisors of each department. And if you're wondering, you know, which location am I going to be assigned? We have over 400 locations in the U.S. and about over 200 of those locations we place interns and MTs. You will let us know what locations you're interested. If there's an opening, that's the location we'll get you through the interview process. But when you're in these different rotations, this is not a, a program where you're just going to walk around with a clipboard and kind of observe. No, we're, you're going to get the opportunity to really dive in, learn, ask questions. Our program, our MT program, has existed for 40 years. So you can imagine how many changes and updates we've made to our program to make sure it's successful. And we know how important it is for you to learn these four different areas. We have a training binder that's going to um, really set, um, you're going to have your calendar already ready of what um, month you're going to spend in which area, what are you expected to do after each of these rotations, there are some assessments at the end to make sure you've really understood everything you need to understand in those uh, rotations. We are essentially during these 15 months, we're paying you to really learn CINTAS and start building some of those leadership skills that we need. So very exciting. You'll spend uh, time in each of these departments. And as an intern, you'll also get a preview to all these departments. Maybe your task may be uh, a little different uh, as opposed to being an MT. As an MT, you're going to be tasked with a lot of projects where, um, you know, for both MT and intern, we're going to want to get your input. We want to hear from your fresh perspective and the different tasks that you're going to be assigned. But just know you're going in 
uh, you'll get your hands dirty, but this is good. You're going to get to build a relationship with our partners and you're going to be able to learn a lot from all of our leaders, which will be very important for you. Um, so let me jump to the, the next slide and let me tell you a little bit more of the benefits you're going to get from the program. So I already mentioned it's a very, very hands-on program. So you're definitely going to be learning. Um, we also make sure to assign you a professional mentor. And when we say a professional mentor, this is somebody who typically has graduated from the program, is now at a GM or higher level, who's going to be a, a mentor to you. You're going to be reporting directly to the general manager as an MT and intern. So you'll have access to uh, that leader, which is the highest leader at every facility. Uh, but you're also going to have a mentor who can guide you and you can go to and ask questions. Um, I recently attended a graduation in Southern California and that particular MT who graduated had her mentor there, but had three other general managers who also served as a mentor. So you're not just going to get one. If you want more, you could definitely um, seek those out. Um, another great thing of the program is you get a lot of business and financial training every month, multiple times a month. It's going to be expected that your general manager sit down with you and really go over those financial statements. So you really understand how is your local business doing? Where are you winning? Where should you maybe uh, change things up? Yes, you learn a lot about this in college, but this is where you're really going to understand the numbers and how you can really support your organization with your recommendations and just see in general how a business makes sure to pivot depending on those financial statements. You're going to get exposure to executive leadership. So I mentioned earlier, you're going to report directly to the general manager. You're going to be sitting on the leadership team and attending all those meetings where all leaders are invited, which is really great exposure to you to really learn um, everything a leader should uh, start learning early in the uh, in your career. And if you ever have visitors, executives, things like that, we love to make sure our MTs are, are right in front, that you get a chance to meet our executives. I've been in, in locations where if the um, senior executives are visiting, they're right away asking, you know, what MTs are in this facility and you get a chance to interact with them. And you'll also get to travel to our corporate headquarters to meet a lot of these leaders, including our CEO, as part of your training program. There's gonna be a lot of project-based experiences I mentioned too that we want to hear from you. You're coming straight out of college. You have a lot of fresh perspective that we want to hear. So as you're assigned to different projects, um, you'll get an opportunity to provide it through that. We also have in, in different markets, if there's other locations that are close by and they have a project where they need more MTs, you'll also have an opportunity to maybe sign up and say, hey, I want to take part of that. Maybe it's a couple hours, a couple of weeks, uh, but there's opportunities to also support different locations if, if that opportunity presents themselves. There's a lot of professional development seminars. There's dozens and dozens of trainings that we provide our leaders, and all of those trainings are going to be accessible to you, whether it's virtual, in person, those that require you to travel to our corporate headquarters or travel maybe to a close by location in a different city or different state. We want to make sure we're preparing you to be a leader. So we're not just giving you exposure to what we do as a company and the products and services. We want to make sure you also get an understanding um, of different skills that are very important to be leaders. So there will be diversity and inclusion, green belt, Six Sigma, core course, core course. You're going to definitely enjoy because that's a, uh, a training that's specific to you where you'll get to um, attend our headquarters along with dozens of other MTs from across the U.S. and Canada and get to meet them, which is great. And then there's also training about meticulous hiring. So we want to make sure you know how do you how do you need to find those next leaders that are going to join our company? And you'll learn from the questions you ask to things we look for in candidates. So a lot of great trainings there. And this is just a small summary of a lot of the other benefits you get from our program. Um, but it maybe not on specifically on here, but I know it's important to you as a student. You also get access to be part of our different diversity groups that you heard about earlier. Those that are specific to say women or veterans or uh, Hispanic uh, partners or African-American partners. We have so many of them. You'll get to be involved and also take part and helping host event and things like that. We look to our MTs as definitely leaders within our location. So you get to be part of so many great projects, which I love. So going on now to the next slide. So if we wanna look at your career path, whether you start as an intern or you start as an MT, this is kind of the typical. This doesn't mean that every single intern or MT follows this track, but this is kind of a good overview so you know what to expect. And just remember as an MT, 
Um, you can also, I mean, if, if you want to turn join us versus an intern, you have that opportunity to then move on as an MT. So we talked about earlier, a field intern, typically eight to 12 weeks or part-time during the year. Then you move into the MT program, that's 15 months, 12 months operations, three months in the sales side. After that, we typically want our MTs to go into a sales rep, um, rep position. And if you're wondering why, remember, we've had this, this MT program for 40 years. So we've had um, different roles post the MT program. And this is the role that we really see really helps you develop those sales skills that you're going to need as a sales rep. You'll work with so many other businesses in your area, and that's going to also help you. So when you become a general manager, you really understand how businesses are ran. So although many of you might be wondering or saying, hey, I don't want to do sales. Sales is so important in regardless of the position that you work in. So that's why we want you to spend some time. It could be a year. It could be two to three years. And then after that, we want you to start jumping into those management positions, whether it's a service manager, production manager, or hey, there might be other positions that currently don't exist and they're in management and we're going to need you there. And then you might transition into a branch manager, sales manager. And the goal is to get you to a general manager or director level in five to seven years. And is that the end goal? Is that the last position you'll have? No. If there is a CEO among us, we would love to see you go all the way to that level. Remember, our current CEO, he was also an MT once. 75% of our general managers went through this program. Probably a third of our senior executives went through this program. So um, there's a lot of great opportunities for any MT, not just for a general manager, director level, you can go all the way up to be a CEO. But this is typically the career path. And like I said, I say typical because it can be a lot faster. It can maybe take a little bit more time. It really depends also on your skills and if you're open to relocation. So if you're open to relocation, whether that's within your region or across the US or, or Canada, that makes it a lot easier to move you through the process. So those are some of the factors we, we also take into account. We also wanna hear from you. At the end of each role, we're gonna wanna see what, what do you wanna do next? And we also as leaders make sure to see, hey, maybe what skills are you missing or do you need to work on a little bit? And maybe what position will serve you better? Um, at that time. So there's a lot of things we take into account to make sure we're placing you in the best position. And I want to make sure you all know our internships and our MT program, they're all paid. It's competitive pay that you will be earning. Um, and I know I think the next slide is jumping into questions. So there's probably a lot of questions because I know the MT and the intern specific things you want to know. So please ask away. We're going to be ready for those questions right now. All right, so first one, how can I apply and hope to get an email I can communicate with? So the best answer I can give you is uh, connect with any of us on here. If there is a specific location that you did not see in that chat, feel free to reach right out to me. I'm gonna drop, um, or I already dropped my LinkedIn. So feel free to connect on my LinkedIn. If you didn't see one of us say we cover that area, just connect with me and I will get you with my counterpart. The whole US and Canada is covered by our team. Um, some of our team just wasn't available today. So please. And then would it be possible to be an intern for a couple of months, then relocate to another location for the MT role after graduation? Yes. Um, we have interns that go home for summer and then stay where their school is after graduation for the MT program and vice versa. So absolutely, again, connect with us to see if our location that you're interested in is open to an MT, or excuse me, an intern. Um, so shoot us a message immediately with where you want to be. Do you guys offer remote positions? At this time, the management trainee program and internship are not remote. Um, you can't le learn to lead from a distance. We need you to be hands-on with our partners and, and learn what every day looks like with partners. So unfortunately at this time, no. Uh, this question is for every panelist. What's the greatest challenge you faced in your role and how did you overcome it? Uh, I will start. So I was actually faced with uh, a little bit more of a controversial one, I believe. So uh, I was told I would never be successful in sales as a female. And um, there's multiple ways to handle that. And one of them is to fall into it and believe that. And the other is to challenge it. And so I took that 
Um, and our old sales president or vice president was a female and she, in one of her presentations that I was in said, watch me. And that's how she lived her entire career was someone told her, no, you're not gonna be able to do that. You won't be able to make it, whatever it is. She would always say, watch me. So I took that. Um, and my rookie year in sales, I was the number one sales rep and hit presidents club. I now have a dog named George because of it. Um, and so for me, it was, it was overcoming that challenge, but definitely that is now how I live my career is it's watch me. So I'm going to throw it over to Nancy, just cause you're next on my queue. I think my greatest challenge and I'll keep it to this now position uh, previously was an HR manager. I think my greatest challenge was going from being at one location, working with very few leaders to now expanding and having to work with leaders across Southern California, uh, different personalities, different leadership styles. And so, you know, that was a challenge at first, but hey, I love that all of our partners are so great and they're open to, hey, calling them, setting up some time, getting to know them, visiting their facilities and, and just getting to know, you know, a little bit more of their style. And so for me, that first, that was just the challenge just going from, like I said, uh, you know, a few to, all the leaders in Southern California, but it's worked out great because of the culture we have here at Centos. Absolutely. All right, Olivia, you're next on my screen. Do you want to go ahead and answer that question as well? Yeah, absolutely. And that's a tough one, Tom, but I'm going to throw it back to my experience from starting my career at Centos in Louisville, Kentucky. And then my husband actually got a job a thousand miles away. And he said, hey, we're moving to Fort Myers, Florida. And at first I was like, wow, you know what? I love my career with Centos. I would hate to obviously have to pick up and move and, you know, not be able to transfer. So it really, it took on some um, new networking ideas for myself where I really put myself out there to the entire Florida market and said, Hey, this is where I'm looking to relocate. What opportunities do you have for me? And like Nancy said, speaking to our CentOS culture and the fact that everyone's there to lend a helping hand, they want to see you succeed. I was able to not only transfer to Fort Myers flawlessly, but I was able to switch up divisions. And the challenge that fell behind that is the fact that I started in rental. I was doing the industrial laundry side with the uniforms and the floor mats and facility services. And I went to a very technical side on the fire side. And um, I'm always up for a challenge. I love to be a continuous learner in my life. So being able to take a step aside, learn new products, new services in a completely new way of how CentOS operates was really exciting for me. And I just had to make sure that, you know, I took everything and uh, really just absorbed it throughout the learning process. So that was one of the greatest challenges that I have faced so far. That's great. All right, Julie, to finish that question off. Yeah, so mine um, kind of coincides with the with Olivia and Nancy here. Um, so being newer into the position now um, as a campus talent acquisition manager, um, transitioning into that was very difficult for myself. Um, I hadn't even been with the company for a full year when I had found out that I was going to be needed um, back here in Michigan. Um, so remember, I'm living out in California. I'm working for CentOS out in California. Um, so having to really build up that confidence and inform not only my general manager and my HR director, but also my team that I truly loved being a part of every single day, um, I loved what I was doing as an HR manager and, um, you know, really having to be vulnerable at that moment and saying, hey, I really need to get back home, um, but I love CentOS so much that I don't want to leave. What can I do? Kind of like Olivia, kind of reaching out and, and figuring out um, the steps ahead of time. And so um, just being able to kind of challenge myself in a way, even though the situation was challenging. It was more of a challenge personally for me. Um, you might not really think this, but I am a very um, shy person sometimes. And so for me to go out on a limb and, and reach out to who is my now boss and say, hey, you don't know me, but I need to get here. And I know you have this position open. I would love to speak to you more. Um, and so just by being able to kind of step out of my comfort zone, get uncomfortable, because that's just what you need to do in your career. Um, I was now able to land this great opportunity and got to be home with my family, um, but still being able to work for a company that, that I love and want to be with for the continuation of my career. So that's what I would say. Awesome. Thank you so much. All right. 
Competitive pay, yes. So our MTs are based, um, or excuse me, paid based on cost of living in the area. So for those who just asked, or someone just asked about San Francisco, San Francisco and New York are to be the highest paid MTs because cost of living is the highest. And then obviously we base it off of that. Um, you also get a full benefits package along with that salary. So medical, dental, vision, paid time off, 401k matching, the list goes on and on for that. So yes. Um, so when I apply, how long do you think I should wait for a response? Olivia, I'm going to throw this one over to you. Absolutely. So when it comes to the application process, if you are applying directly from our website and you haven't heard back within a week or two from one of our human resources managers, I highly encourage reaching out on LinkedIn, taking a look to say, hey, you know what, this specific CentOS partner works in this specific city that I'm looking to apply myself in. And then from there, you know, connecting with them, shooting them a quick message. Um, it's really easy. All you have to do is go into your LinkedIn search bar, um, you know, type in the specific city, HR manager, CentOS, and you're more than likely going to find someone. So I would, I would definitely suggest that one or reach out to one of us CPAMs. Um, we would love to put you in touch with the right people um, when it comes down to, you know, navigating throughout the United States and all the different territories that we cover. Thank you. Are there any tips that you can offer to help us succeed in the application process? Nancy, I'm going to throw this one over to you. Yes, definitely. So if you want some tips on how to be successful in the application process, here are some. First, making sure when you apply, making sure you fill out completely your application. Some people just put their resume and you think, hey, that's it. No, if you don't follow all the instructions, we're going to assume you're probably not going to be a good leader. So you're out. Uh, once you also attach that resume, make sure that resume is a winning resume. No mistakes. It has updated information. Um, a lot of students forget to put their involvement in student organization or their athletes, things like that. Make sure to put that on there. Um, also, um, you know, if you're applying maybe via uh, LinkedIn, make sure you have also a winning LinkedIn profile. So make sure it's up to date. We also source a lot from LinkedIn and we want to remind students, put in all your skills, your places you've worked, even if it's volunteer work, that's going to be important. And when you go through the interview process, if you get that call, uh, make sure to treat every, whether it's the phone call, the virtual ones, as a real professional interview. Make sure you're dressed to impress. You're, you come with questions. You've researched our company. Please don't come to interviews asking, so what does CentOS do? I have no idea what you guys do. Yes, you do. You were here in this presentation. So, you know, ask more specific um, questions. Uh, make sure to, as you're getting asked a question, you responded completely. Those are just some quick tips that I have for you to make sure you're successful in this process. Thank you, Nancy. Um, are certain majors preferred in the MT program? Julie, you want to answer this one? Definitely. So we are always looking at all majors. Um, so whether you are in journalism or liberal arts or music, we still want to speak with you and have you be a part of our company. Um, if we only wanted one major, we we would all be cookie cutter. We don't want that. Everyone is their own individual and we everyone has some type of skill to be able to bring. Um, the ones that we tend to see the majority of would be our business administration, finance, accounting, um, entrepreneurship actually is, a, is one that comes across as well. But don't count yourself out if you aren't any of those. Still apply um, because it's still worth it to get in there and and be and show yourself off because um, you just never know what's going to happen. Yes. So in short words, uh, we're looking for the right person, not the right major. Uh, one of our counterparts, Alexis, was actually a communications major, uh, and she is who I send all my emails to. So um, there was a question about relocation. During the program itself, it's a little bit harder because every location runs a tiny bit differently as far as relocating within CentOS after the program. Um, I think every single one of us has now relocated. Nancy, technically you relocated, so we'll call it relocation. Uh, but yeah, it's that's where you promote fastest. So all of us have been willing to relocate, but it's also okay not to relocate. I have a general manager in our Eugene, Oregon area who has never left Eugene, Oregon, and he is a general manager. So there's always that option as well. Are there any sophomore internships? Yes, we do look at sophomores also. Um, we tend to give priority to juniors, but I have a couple of sophomores right now that are coming in this summer. Um, so it is definitely there. Um, you do not have to have a background in sales. 
or management to qualify. It's all how you talk about it. Did you, were you a server at a restaurant? That's a sales skill. You may not know it, but it is. Were you a barista? That's a sales skill. Were you a, uh, did you work at a daycare? Did you nanny or babysit? Those are leadership skills. Were you part of a, a team, competitive? Those are sales skills. You don't necessarily have to come from a sales background. It's all how you articulate your experience. Relocation is big. How does CentOS cultivate service needs over work-life balance? Um, that is a great question. We work 40 hours a week. Am I going to tell you you're going to always work 40 hours a week that you will never work over that? No. But did I go to the gym today at eight o'clock? Yes. So for me, it's a balance of, did I get my work done? Things like that. So with CentOS, do you have a doctor's appointment where you need to leave a little early or you need to take a longer lunch break? Okay, no problem. Go take care of it. Um, it's as long as you're not taking advantage of the system, you should be fine. It's definitely, you know, you're not working nights and weekends. You're not working holidays. You have paid time off. There's so many different benefits to that aspect. I came from the restaurant industry. So to not work nights and weekends for me was absolutely huge. And then when I was an MT, there were some early mornings when I was out on route or in the plant, but then I was off by one or two in the afternoon. And let me tell you, going to the grocery store when everyone else is at work is the best thing in the entire world. So it, there's definitely that balance there. Um, and I would say more than a lot of Fortune 500 companies. Personally, how was your experience when you first started working with CentOS? I will let this one go around the room because I think this is major. Um, I personally came to CentOS like one of us said prior, for the people. Um, I had offers coming out of college for more money and CentOS uh, was about $10,000 less than my highest offer. And the reason I chose CentOS was uh, the people. At the end of the day, I felt like I connected with them. I felt like they were going to be more of my friends than um, just going to work and hating everyone that I worked with. And that was really important to me that I liked my partners. Um, I can tell you right now, that I have talked to all three of these people today, whether I texted them or called them about something that was probably not CentOS related, uh, if I'm being honest. And that's the team, that's the culture. I talk to my counterparts all the time. Um, I don't know if I should admit this, but at my wedding, I had two tables of CentOS people and we did not have a large wedding um, because you will build relationships and friendships with these people. So. That was why I started with CentOS and I, I will tell you, not every day is rainbows and sprinkles. Um, and any recruiter that tells you it is, is full of, you know what, it's hard work, but hard work is rewarded. And if you like the people you work with, it's even better. Um, Nancy, you're next on my queue. So I'm just going to shift it right over to you if you have anything yeah. to add. Yeah, so for me, when I started at CentOS, first, I didn't know at all what CentOS was when I went through the interview process, but it was through the interview process when I met people, like really saw the culture that I fell in love. And when I, I jumped into the position as an HR manager, I remember thinking in my previous role as an HR manager, every time I wanted to do something for partners, whether it was a celebration or recognition, do something, I was always told, well, how much is it going to cost? Uh, you know, I was always asked a bunch of questions at Sintel. I remember as an HR manager, I never got the pushback. If my GM heard, yes, yeah, to celebrate a partner, it's to recognize good work. It was always, yes, go ahead, make sure. Don't forget so-and-so's birthday. Don't forget this holiday's coming up. And that was when I realized, wow, this is the company I want to work with because it is part of our culture to celebrate, um, you know, our partners and, and recognize what they're doing. So that for me was like what really like sold it to me that I'm in the right place. Awesome. Olivia, do you have anything to add to that? Nancy and Danielle really encompassed, um, you know, a lot of what I experienced myself, but overall, I just felt valued. Um, I remember, you know, thinking back to my first week at CentOS, I started on a Monday and by the Wednesday timeframe, I was sitting in a staff meeting and my general manager looked at me and said, hey, Olivia, what's your input? I said, whoa, whoa, whoa. I've only been here like 72 hours. Are you really asking me, <laughs> you know? to uh, give you my input. And he said, absolutely. He goes, we value everyone's, you know, comments, concerns, innovative ideas, you name it. And I just knew from right then and there that I had chose a company that not only valued me, but wanted to invest in me and would help me keep growing and um, become the best professional I possibly can. So I still feel that same way um, three years later. Thank you, Julie. I know that was probably everything you were going to say. <laughs> Anything else? I wanted to touch on, someone had asked the work-life balance question. And 
for me, I knew who Cintas was. Um, being from the East Coast, it, they've been around. I, I knew them as a company. They're a very um, sought after company. So for me, I was really excited to interview for them. What I wasn't expecting was kind of what Danielle said, working for a Fortune 500 company, you're not expecting the freedom that you get um, with working with Cintas. Um, I remember my first couple of weeks in, um, I had an ear infection and I was miserable. And my boss was like, go get that checked out and you need time off. You want to come in later. Like he was very open and wanted to make sure that I was taken care of as a person, not as an employee. Um, you know, checking in on me, all of that, even me moving out here, I've been getting text messages. Hey, how was your drive? Are you doing okay? Can I help you with anything? Um, that was the first experience where I was able to one, I had weekends off and I literally had the weekend off. Um, the first couple of weekends, I didn't know what to do with myself. Uh, because I was coming from retail and I also came from food and beverage where you're just on the go, go, go. So um, my first experiences with Cintas have been just phenomenal. And I think that's what makes it such a great company is we all can have different experiences. Um, and it all kind of boils down to um, Cintas really, truly cares about their partners and wants to make sure um, that we have everything that we need. Awesome. Thank you. All right. The last question we have right now, again, if you have any other questions, please pop them in. Um, but for each, what is the most significant value that the company has? Again, I'm going to go with how we treat our partners. I, I've worked for a lot of different companies. I obviously talk to recruiters all the time. Um, this, this campus recruitment uh, world is very small, believe it or not. And I have yet to meet another company where they value their partners so much. And it is frontline all the way up. I know for a fact that uh, we have our CEO do location tours and he walks through the plant and he talks to the frontline partners. And it's not like you have to submit a question. It's like, hey, how's it going? It's a real conversation. And I think that alone of just the treatment of partners is so important to everyone that's here. Um, and yeah, so that's mine. Does anyone have ones that they want to add to that? I think going with what you were saying, Danielle, um, for myself, when I was at the facility, the focus on safety was so important. And even through COVID, we got to see how Centos really cared about its partners, not just the, you know, making sure the money kept coming in. No, we got to see it. I mean, with my location, I remember we were giving all of our partners hand sanitizers, toilet paper, things like that to make sure that they were taken care of, not just at work, but at home. And so through COVID, I got to see, hey, you know, the amazing thing that Centos does for its partners. Awesome. Anyone else want to add anything or move on to the next one? We're good. Perfect. All right. Originally, what was your hiring process like and what is different from then? So I can only what, imagine what it was in 1929, 1930. Uh, I'm sure it was not anywhere near what we do now. Um, because we hire based on our CentOS culture, our process can be a little bit on the lengthy side. Since I have been here, it has definitely shortened um, for the benefit of you guys. And, oh, for each of us, <laughs> thanks. Um, okay, so for me, I was recruited out of Chico State, which is in Northern California. So I actually met Cintas at a career fair. I had no idea who Cintas was. Um, I like to tell the story of it because I think it's so funny, but when I was approached by Cintas, they asked me to interview with them and I told them no. Uh, I was not interested in an industrial laundry company. I don't want to do my own laundry. Why would I want to do someone else's laundry was literally what I told the recruiter. Um, and it just didn't interest me right off the bat. And he convinced me and was like, just come. And so in my mind, I took this interview <laughs> as a practice interview, I was going to work for the fancy uh, company that was three booths down. I wanted to be in their cute little jeans and a blazer. I didn't want to wear a suit every day and I didn't want to get dirty. I wanted that different lifestyle. And so I took the interview as practice and then they moved me on. So that was a screening interview with HR managers. They moved me to what they called a round robin. We still do it today. We just do it virtual now. 
basically it was three speed interviews with different leaders um, and all in one day. So you basically did an interview, got a five minute break, did an interview, got a five minute break, did an elevator pitch, which we still do today. It's just not as much pressure, I swear. Um, and they moved me forward again. And I remember being like, at what point do I tell them I'm not interested? And then they were like, we really want you to go to our Stockton, California location. And for any of you who are familiar with Northern California, that is like number three on the murder rate in California. And I was like, there's no way, there's no way I'm going. And they were like, just come see the location, come meet the team. So I was like, all right, whatever, can't hurt. Drove to Stockton. And what won me over was the fact that the general manager walked around with me to introduce me to different partners. And as we were walking through the location, he was good morning and knew everyone's name, knew their kid's name, knew had gone to the pumpkin patch, all of that. You can't fake that, in my opinion. There was too many, uh, you know, hey, how was the pumpkin patch with Tim? And how was, and I was just sitting there like, how does he know this? We had 120 partners there. So that's a lot of people to know names too. So it started to really win me over. And everyone I met talked about the people, no matter what. And that was something really important to me. And so I kept through the process and uh, I met with the group vice president. Ironically, I had food poisoning uh, while I was meeting with him. So that was an interesting experience. And then they offered me the position. And I remember weighing my options again and was not my highest paying option but I loved the feel of the company. And so that was my process. It's very similar to this day. We just like to get through it a little faster because uh, I started interviewing the beginning of October and my offer came right around Christmas. So we try to get through it in a perfect world about a week and a half. Um, I say perfect world because we all know things happen now. And so I would say average time is probably about three to four weeks to get you through the process. Um, and everyone's interview process was very similar. Nancy and I got hired very similar times. Olivia shortly after. Uh, Julie's process might have been a little quicker because she got hired when we started revamping the process. But generally, you'll meet the whole leadership team and it's about four to five interviews. Connect with all of us. I know we're running out of time. Connect with us all on LinkedIn. Reach out if you didn't see the location you were looking for. Visit careers.centos.com to look at all of our openings. If you love the culture, but maybe the MT program isn't what you're looking for, it has everything on there. Um, visit our Way Up page for our management training and intern postings. And if there's any last minute questions, feel free to drop them in. Otherwise, thank you so much. Where can I find the LinkedIn's? If you scroll up, they should be in here. Team, if you wanna drop them one more time so they're at the bottom, there's those. Um, feel free to connect with us, all of us. The more people you have on the LinkedIn, the better. And if, again, we will get you in the right hands if we're not the right person. Thank you guys so much. We really appreciate you taking a, an hour to hang out with us today. Hopefully you learned something, um, but yeah, have a great night, everyone.